This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence to launch your passion project. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. A happy Friday to all of you out there, hope you're doing well. So Elon Musk tweeted this morning, actually a great many parts are produced by our suppliers, but Tesla is more vertically integrated than other car makers. This in response to an article that was tweeted about Giga Berlin aiming to produce all of its own car parts in house. Now, if you know anything about auto manufacturing, then you know there are so many small little components and parts that are always going to be sourced from other companies, literally making all like 100% of the parts that go in a car in-house is just really not practical. So when we talk about Tesla being vertically integrated, yes, relative to other auto manufacturers, they do much more in-house, which has many benefits in the long run. But Elon's making it clear this is not 100% vertical integration. Of course, they will strive that way, but it might be one of those goals that's never actually really met, just because it's always gonna make sense for certain parts to be made by somebody else who specializes in that part. And this has to be one of the coolest how it started versus how it's going pictures I've seen on the internet and Elon replied it will be like this but bigger so Elon set out to do something and he has done it. And then Holmars chimed in about full self-driving in beta 9 and Elon said I'm driving alpha 9 but we need to fix some obvious issues before releasing beta 9 hopefully next week not two weeks but next week Full self-driving subscription capability should be turning on via the Tesla app. So we're left wondering here a little bit on the second line about FSD capability turning on. Does that mean it's going to be rolling out in the next few days right now? in the next few weeks with this Alpha 9 release being worked on and up through next week. We really don't know for sure, but such is the case with Elon's Twitter, but we should definitely be monitoring the Tesla app to see about these FSD subscriptions and if they are indeed about to start rolling out. So it looks like we're getting a meeting of the minds with Jack Dorsey, Kathy Wood, and Elon Musk. Jack tweeted about this little get together conference chat thing about Bitcoin development and that community. And then Elon and Jack go in a little tweet back and forth. <laughs> and I just have to point out, it's pretty funny to see Elon tweet LMFAO, OMG. This from one of the most successful, important people on the planet tweeting like this. You just, you love to see it. But anyway, Jack then says, let's have the talk, talking about Bitcoin and all of Elon's questions and concerns. And then Elon said, for the bit curious, very well then, let's do it. Jack says he's gonna set it up. And then Kathy Wood says, brilliant, looking forward to the discussion. You and me both, Kathy, so we don't have a timeline just yet. And hopefully they live stream this conversation. Even if not, hopefully somebody records it and uploads it because this should be a very fun and interesting conversation even if you don't particularly like Bitcoin. So we'll keep an eye on this. You probably saw by now Panasonic sold all of its Tesla stake. Pretty much every news article is picking this up. It was worth about $3.6 billion. All you really need to know is that Panasonic has done very well with Tesla stock and Panasonic is obviously laser focused on ramping up their battery cell production. This stock sale could very well function as a capital raise of sorts for Panasonic to put that money into expanding its operations. Now, of course, it could be something other than that we won't know for sure exactly why Panasonic sold but you just need to know it is once again not a reason to panic people are going to make decisions with Tesla stock to have nothing to do with the company I'll say it every time something like this happens just to make sure if you're new you understand you don't need to worry Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website or online store and all websites are fully optimized for mobile meaning everything adjusts automatically Squarespace also allows you to generate revenue through gated members only content and can help you to grow your audience with Squarespace email campaigns that match the aesthetic of your website. Squarespace has a robust feature suite along with useful guides to maximize your website's search engine optimization. I can tell you honestly, I would not have a YouTube channel without the magic of SEO. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you see the power of the platform, go to squarespace.com slash electrified or use the coupon code electrified to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So if you remember a few weeks back, Elon revealed some information about his living situation, how he lives in a $50,000 home in Boca that he does not own. He literally just rents it. And today we're getting some more information on this specific house. So I'm going to play this video. This is actually from a company called Boxable, which is a really cool company. These little casitas or houses are foldable. So they're much easier to transport and move around the country 
and I guess they can be built in under a day. So the video you're seeing on the screen isn't necessarily Elon's specific house, but I believe most of the layouts are similar. So this is pretty much exactly what Elon would be living in. Now, he did say actually on Twitter a couple weeks back that he made some upgrades, so his should be worth $69,000, not the going rate of $50,000. But as you can see, they actually look pretty nice inside, so Elon's not really slumming it. This would probably be more than he would actually need. And I guess the $50,000 one is about 400 square feet, and the average utility cost is about $28 per month. So very efficient, very economical, and especially in cities where you know land is at a premium this is a pretty unique option personally if I was single I would consider living in a small tiny home like this this would be more than enough for me and you can live in one of these casitas for about $250 per month and Boxable is supposed to be coming out with some bigger ones and some that are even two stories so a company to look into to track their progress. And if you remember about one year ago, we got some news about Tesla and Chongqing, hopefully I'm saying that right, talking about projects, but not a factory. And just today, SKPL shared on Reddit images of Tesla's newest delivery center in Chongqing, China. And I just thought these images were cool and that this story was good to know that about a year ago, this seems to have come to fruition. A quick note on this whole infrastructure thing, I'm not gonna go into details because this political stuff changes week to week and who really knows how this will end up. But right now the story is that the EV tax credit is no longer in this new bipartisan agreement. So if you were somebody who thought that those were going to be a surefire thing and a definite, just pump the brakes because it definitely is not a guarantee that those new EV tax credits come for any automaker, let alone for Tesla. Now, there are talks that even though this new bipartisan agreement does not include the EV tax credits, that they will try to pass it with a different bill or different legislation. So just something to keep an eye on in the coming months. Tesla once again raised the price of the long range Model Y to $52,990, this up $500. Wayback Machine shows us June 17th, it was 52,490. The performance model remains unchanged. As you can see, the Tesla decanter or just the empty Tesla tequila bottle is now for sale for $190 on the Tesla shop website if you want to go and pick one up. These were selling on eBay between $200 and $230, but that price will probably come down now with the ability to go get a brand new one for $190. And I thought that this navy blue matte wrap posted by 67 and gifted on Reddit, was a pretty slick looking car and a really cool picture, so I just wanted to share it. And then a quick note on Neo, some cars are arriving in Israel for Mobileye RoboTaxi trials. Neo is sending over their ES8 SUV for Mobileye, which the Intel-owned company will use in the Tel Aviv metropolitan area for advanced trials of its RoboTaxi project. Now, this project was actually originally going to use the Volkswagen ID Buzz Microbus, but due to delays with that one, Mobileye will now use these Neo cars. But apparently when the Volkswagen Microbus is available, the platform will then be transferred over to the ID Buzz. But it still remains unclear if and when Israeli regulation will allow the vehicles to travel around on Israel's roads without the presence of a driver to supervise the vehicle. I've been saying to keep an eye on Mobileye. I think they are doing a very solid work and they don't get enough attention but I do want to start working in important news pieces about Neo and BYD, so thank you guys for the input. Obviously, this is still a Tesla channel predominantly. That is what gets me excited. That is what I am the most passionate about, but some of these other stories definitely deserve attention as well. But that's it for today. I hope you guys have an excellent weekend. Please take a second to like the video if you did, and a big thank you to everybody on the next screen.